I want you to get ready to meet Guy Portelli. Joy. Thank you so much for speaking to me today, Guy. We've... It's always a pleasure, Guy. <laughs> always a pleasure. Right, well, I wanted to talk about... Um, first of all, let's go way back to your time growing up in, in um, South Africa. Yep, yep. Did you sort of knew, know that you were going to go into sculpture and art and stuff, or did you just sort of fall into it? Well, age... 11, I want to be an architect. Age 13, I want to be an archaeologist. To some degree, what I do is the fusion of those two. But what I do is I create the piece of artwork that I would have liked to have dug up as an, as a, as an archaeologist. So it's quite surreal, really. Rather than sort of spending hours in the field digging away, I just go in the workshop and I make it and think... So that's, that's why my sculptures are, are quite jewel-like. And it's sort of got a lot of historical influence from Egyptian to even Japanese on occasions and right the way through to Aztec. So the use of the mosaic, which I love, mm. um, because it's so hard to put colour into sculpture, but this is a really organic way of doing it. Um, and it, it goes back to, you know, Greek and Roman and, you know, the South American. So in a way, that wanting to be the archaeologist and searching for those treasures. I now want to be the sculptor who makes those treasures. The one thing that I've really noticed about you is that you've always had a very strong business acumen, mm. which so many artists sort of lack that. You know, you've almost got to step outside of your art in mm. some ways and actually see it as being a business as well. Yeah. Would you say that's, um, that's, that's always been very important for you or have you sort of fall into that knowledge by chance? Really, my desire when I left college was just to really go into the shed and make things. Um, and make things and sell them, just leave that, live that very simple sort of business life of, of quite an honest way of working, really. But then I realised I was paying VAT and I was paying tax and I was employing people. And I had this re resistance to being a businessman. And the only way I could overcome that was to actually say, I will treat the art of running a business as part of the creative process, which is how I managed to think sort of outside the box and, and approach Dragon's Den. Because that way of thinking, thinking this is a creative pattern and actually running the business in a creative way is as important as making the sculptures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously I want to talk to you a little bit as well about, obviously, life since Dragon's mm, Den in 2005, because mm, mm. who could have seen that, that, that they'd actually take it, because they're known for being absolutely ruthless, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. How did you feel when they actually said, you know, three, three of the dragons back to you? Well, it felt like I just won the lottery, you know, I was jumping up and down in the car park and thinking, yes, finally I found a way through. Um, I mean, I felt like I was representing the, the artists because artists always have a really bad press when it comes to business. Yeah. And it's, it's unjustified, but it's, it's simply because people don't understand our values. Mm -hmm. I, I give quite a lot of lectures, whether it be in schools to, to kids who want to, prof to be doing arts professionally or to business communities. And I always start with the, the fact 11% of GDP in this country is through the arts. And the business community just take an intake of breath because they just cannot believe. You know, banking is 17% and art is 11%. But then they're not looking at art as a broad spectrum. I mean, you've got car design, you've got fashion, you've got yeah. film, you've got theatre, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. jewellery. You know, it's huge. And we are really good at it in this country. You know, we have a natural aptitude. Mm -hmm. And that's what we can't even get across the headmasters of the school, the fact that art mm. is a business. Mm. And it's, you know, and once you get across to them, that these kids are not going to just, just sit around drinking red wine and, and, and staying on the dole forever, mm. you know, mm. they're actually adding to the, mm. the, the value of this country. Mm. That, that's a really good point, because so many times people do forget that art is collectible, mm. and it's going to stay there, it's going to, you know, and you don't have to be dead. <laughs> 
you know, to actually see, see the fruits of a labour. Yeah, but if it can be arranged. If it's going to improve you... the prices, we can arrange that. <laughs> well, Guy, you're thinking you just come here. We're going to stage a shooting. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're so much more alive. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it is actually this... I think um, we suppress so much of our need to create, you know, um, the vast majority of people do not allocate time. So, so I think it's, it's something everybody should do. In a way, you don't have to be good at it, it is the doing of it that mm. frees you up. Because mm. it just puts another layer into your life mm. that, you know, if, you, if you're sort of writing poetry, a poem and you've got a book in your pocket, mm. Mm. you know, you're out there and you're looking, mm. you're looking for that next sentence and you sit down and you write it. Um, and it doesn't have to be good to have a really mm. profound effect on your life. What would you say to any struggling, brand new, young artists out there? You know, because one quote I read about you, it said that, um, you know, often people get addicted to the struggle. You know, that's, <laughs> how's it going? Oh, it's really bad at the moment. You know, there is that sense of, it's going to take forever, you know. Mm, but mm. what would you say to people who are maybe in that place, just going, oh, people are going to like my work, you know? Well, the, the, the priority first is to do it for the right reasons. If you're not doing it for the right reasons, mm. it's not about other people liking your work. It is a, really about you finding a form of expression, finding another language that you can verbalise. Mm. And if it happens that you can sell your work, then that's a bonus. Mm. But if you start off with that as your priority, then you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, you're not doing it for the right yeah. reasons as well. Yeah, I mean, I always think to myself, if I was on a desert island, would I sculpt? And the answer is I would. You know, and that to me makes it, I'm doing it for the right reasons. Mm. Because it wouldn't matter if other people didn't see it. Mm, mm. I would know that, that I'm challenging myself mm. and, and finding, mm. utilising my time constructively. Mm. What I really love about this piece is that well, first starters, I love dragonflies. Mm. I mean, what's not to love? But I just love the fact that Bear Man's the exhibition is based on the kiss. It talks about the fertility of, of, mm. of, of a kiss, mm. of a relationship, of that mm. moment of intimacy. Mm. And also bearing in mind that dragonflies, it all happens for some of them in a day, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They, they grow, they live, they breathe, they die. Mm. Mm. And that, to me, speaks of the, you know, the specialness of life, really, mm. as well. And I just think it's beautiful the way you've captured that moment. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It's, it's a piece that gives me great pleasure every time I see it. And um, to see it in different environments and how the light works on it, and is, to me, is, 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 it's just great to have it out there and people responding to it. Do you feel quite sad when you sell it to somebody and then um, do you go and visit them again? <laughs> um, pieces of work. I do often see the pieces that have gone. And it, it is like um, visiting family friends, you know. Um, when you, when you, because you always forget where the pieces are, and then you suddenly walk into someone's room, and it's there, and you think, oh, that's a nice piece. Oh, it's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might buy it. <laughs> oh, well, that's just been so exciting meeting the artist. I want you to tune in and watch the next one because it's time to learn and get excited again about British art at its very best.